We are in Sangroor today and uh, we are here at uh, Shiromani Akali Dal Amritsar's office with the head of the political party, Mr. Simranjit Singh Man. So thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you, Ms. Uh, sir, uh, I want to talk to you first about the current state of affairs in Punjab. A lot has happened in the last few weeks. Can you please uh, tell me about what you think about the state of policing here? Miss, the issue is that uh, we are heading for a general election next year. And uh, the Congress and the BJP and RSS, <coughs> they always want to find an issue how to fight the elections and who are the bad boys it is either the muslims or the sikhs and this amritpal singh issue has been blown out of context there is no registered case against him if the hukumat wanted to arrest him he could have been arrested on the 18th itself he was in his bed and the police could have arrested him the question is why did they allow him time to collect a big convoy to march wherever he wanted to the idea was according to me that the state thought that his youngsters would fire at the police that unfortunately did not happen because amritpal singh gave the slip and ran away that see you have you have said that the uh, amritpal singh's life is in danger he might be uh, killed by the police you've made yes, that statement that why why do you say that sir? because he could have been caught early in the morning at 5 o'clock in the morning in his bed why did they allow him to make a convoy and march with the 67 vehicles and then stop him like indira gandhi in 1984 she called in the armed forces and uh, marched them into the most sacred uh, place of the six the darbar sahib the golden temple and i mean say after that rajiv gandhi won such a great victory that he had one of the biggest victories because the majoritarians thought that the six had been thrashed nice and proper so that's the idea that the elections are coming and they have to make some incident that the state is in danger and these are the people who are endangering it and then go in for the election that is the idea so you are referring to the events in the history and you are saying that the current government is also trying to uh, impose similar situation in punjab right, right now actually because they are all going to the polls next year madam hmm. even the bjp the rss and the aam party and all that stuff they are no friends of the six and this time you're saying that this is all uh, they're going to do is uh, try a similar strategy using punjab as the yes Central madam Party. i mean to say there was not a shot fired by amritpal say there was no hindu killed there was no sikh killed there was no christian killed there was no muslim killed nobody was killed and this big big publicity by the central your these uh, channels that the six are again up to something or the other and you know what the channels created of this no affair nobody was killed nobody was hurt so where's the reason to sort of chase a man who could have been caught in the bed early in the morning right and sir uh, the attacks on uh, abroad in the indian consulates what do you have to say for that because uh, that but, uh, also created no that's there are no attacks these are peaceful demonstrations and peaceful demonstrations are one of the fundamental rights of democracy which the sikhs over there are exercising no 
damage was done to any property, nobody was killed, nobody was hurt. These are demonstrations because the Sikhs now are very, very enraged that year after year, the Sikhs become the whipping boys of the majoritarians and now it's spreading all over the world. Right. Um, sir, also, um, your Twitter account has been withheld yes, because of this. Yes, it's been withheld. Mm -hmm. The government have of you India. Filed, have you filed an appeal for this? I have applied an appeal, but it's all been done because the majoritarians and the government of India want it that way. And it has been sealed. And I'm afraid I've lost my freedom of expression, freedom of speech. And it's very unnatural for a company which operates from a good democracy to switch off my Twitter account. So I was also told that a lot of Punjabi channels which are uh, broadcasting from abroad have also been uh, facing yes. similar blockages. Yes, they've what all would been you... blocked. Uh, there's a sort of a siege against the Sikhs all over the world. And I just had two young ladies meet me and they said that we'd uh, written something on our posts and orders came from Delhi to ask what these posts were about. So every bit of information on our telephones or any other electronic equipment, it has been sweeped, collected, and then the six are harassed. Sir Amritpal, coming back to him, he has still not been caught. Mm. Where do you see uh, this episode of chasing him going? <clears throat> Where do you see this ending? I wouldn't be able to guess where he is. He must be hiding because all India is after him. So when the British were after, after Sebastian the Bose, he went to Iran, then to Turkey and then to Germany. And then he decided to be with the excess powers Mussolini, Hitler and Tojo of Japan. So when people are being hunted down, obviously they are on the run and God knows where Amrit Pal Singh has gone now. You made a statement that he should run away to Pakistan and you said that Sikhs have done that in the past. So yes, this is have. what he should do. Yes, when Sebastian the Bose went into Afghanistan, Iran and into Germany, then that is our country. That's where we've been hounded out because Gandhi and Nehru and the British did not help us to keep Punjab together. They divided it in 1947 and drew the Red Cliff Line. And we were ethnically cleansed from our homelands. So that's our homelands. Half our religion is there. Our scriptures are there. Our architecture is there. Our school of painting is there. Our language is there. We have the same cuisine. And everything is common. So if I've been booted out of my home, like the Kashmiri Pandits feel that they've also been sent out of their homeland. And if they say that we want to go back to Kashmir, that is nothing wrong. And if I've said that that is a part of our country, our land, and if Amrit Pal Singh wants to go there, he should go there. And moreover, the center and all the government agencies were saying that he's an ISI agent. If he was an ISI agent, then the ISI would sort of welcome him, come friend, you are... I mean, after all, India says that he's an ISI agent. Then the ISI would say, come friend, we are your mamas, you've come home. It's as simple as that. So, um do you think the issues that Amritpal has raised in uh, several of his public appearances, do you think any of the governments in Punjab have uh, been able to address the same issues? And why do you think there's so much pull that he has amongst the youth especially? Because the issues of the Sikhs have not been uh, 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 looked into since 1984. Now, we say we are a democracy. And... Uh, Elections to the SDPC have not been held for the last 12 years. It's become a lame duck parliament. Now, how will the Sikhs tolerate this injustice that their parliament duly 
founded by an act of law in 1975, has become a lame duck parliament all of a sudden and 12 years elections have not been held to this house. It's very strange and hurtful. Suppose next year the general elections to parliament are to be held and the Prime Minister and the BJP, the RSS, don't hold the elections and carry on with their persons in the same offices, do you think that would be fair and would the people accept that? If the majority Indians won't accept that, then they should also feel that the Sikhs don't accept the same thing. Why can't we have elections? And these were the issues which were raised at Babel Kalan, which you were also a part of that of ceremony. Course. Hmm. That's why. But sir, there the AAP government had promised that we will complete the investigation within a month and a half. And clearly that has not happened. And many committees, many SITs have been formed to ultimately find out who were behind those attacks. Hmm. Uh, but all the time the reports are just inconclusive. So why do you think that's happening? Like why is the Punjab police and the investigating agencies not able to solve these long-standing issues which are riling up the people in Punjab? Yes, that's the trouble, miss. I'm to say these are simple questions. You don't have to change the constitution or alter the law. These are simple executive uh, issues which can be decided by the center and the Punjab government. Why aren't they doing it? Why are they doing it against the six? And sir, do you have uh, the current government uh, has been uh, trying to bring in a lot of uh, new policies in, in place of basically they're trying to uh, bring Punjab uh, back on. At least this is what it seems that they're trying to put Punjab back on the path of development. They're announcing an agriculture policy. They've come up with an industry policy. Do you think uh, bringing jobs or improving the sectors, which are basically they've not seen any innovation in the last few years, do you think that will help solve uh, any of these long-standing issues and do you think Obviously, law and order if, will, if the state is sincere there are 46 lakh sick youth who are jobless and we propose that the border with Pakistan should be open for commerce and for trade and there's nothing wrong with that because India is trading with China Though China has occupied about 50,000 square kilometers of Ladakh territory since 1962, 2020 and 2022, if they can trade and there's a deficit of $1 billion in trade to the disadvantage of India, then why can't we trade and open the borders over here? I'm to say Pakistan is star starving and the Middle East is starving. Why can't we send our grains and our producers from Rajasthan, from Haryana, from Punjab, Jammu Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh? If the border is open, it will cause a lot of benefit to the central finances because they'll be taking a lot of money for the duty and uh, excise purposes. And sir, will it benefit Punjab? How will opening up the borders with Pakistan help the Punjab here? Miss, Pakistan is short of wheat. It's importing wheat from Russia. And we have surplus wheat stocks over here. And then there's a the question of Basmati. Basmati was sold for just 4,000 rupees a quintal over here. But if our traders and our truckers cross Pakistan into Iran, the price of that same Basmati is about 12,000 rupees a quintal. So you can imagine if Punjab is opened up to the Republican central states, erstwhile Russian republics and to the Islamic world, how much people would flourish in northern India. But because we are Sikhs and the fight is between centuries old, between the Hindu and the Muslim. So the Sikhs have to bear the burden of this fight. Why? And so what else uh, do you think the state can do? Because I, when I spoke to the youth in Punjab, most of them said that we don't want to stay here. We want to go abroad because even if we spend time studying, there are no jobs for us. You know, I said 46 lakh uh, jobs. We don't have our jobs and they don't open the border for trade, which will increase the transport and six have two things one is agriculture and one is transport 
and if transport is built up it will help india because all the big truck makers they will benefit the spare parts people will benefit and the six will lose their unemployment and be employed in some constructive manner why can't that be done right and so uh, wh- what do you think should be done to uh, like bring in more uh, high tech jobs here like a lot of people keep complaining that we don't have a corporate sector in punjab we, the industry hasn't revolutionized here so what can be done for that what what do you think the state should do for that that's because the state government and the central government don't represent the six now for instance i am a member of parliament and the speaker gives time on the basis of the strength of every party and every party has a majority of majoritarians that means only the majority tarians are allowed to speak in parliament and simranjit sarman is just shut up i don't get any time because my party is not large enough and the rules don't allow small parties to utter a word in parliament isn't that unfair shouldn't some rules be changed have you raised this in the parliament yes i have but and what response have you got no just uh, the speaker speaker making physical obscene gestures stop 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 no that is not the work of the speaker he is a member of parliament and so am i a member of parliament we are equal though he is in the chair and there's reason why he should be polite and courteous and allow me to speak so coming back to the issue of punjab and uh, the migration here a lot of people here told me that uh, they uh, want to move to another country and uh, especially the young boys and girls after completing their school education they're going but then there is a whole section of people here who are uh, going abroad and then applying for asylum there there are a bunch of children who are going on study visa and work visa but then a large part of the people from punjab are also going uh, and seeking asylum there and they all claim that uh, they have come to you for help Yes. because they need letters from yes. you so can you please tell me about those letters when, what when the state commits crime against its own people since 1984 and just recently on the case of amritpal singh there's no case not a shot has been fired our security in india is in danger and by international law we can flee the borders of india and seek asylum legitimately which people are doing if the state rules by terror and doesn't accept a certain sect of its population as within its main population then people are fleeing and they get a letter for me and i'm very grateful to all the countries that honor this letter that's all So, what exactly are the contents of this letter? What do you tell uh, to the countries where you? I tell them it? all the torture, the murders, extrajudicial killings of the six, and what has transpired since nineteen forty-seven, subsequent subsequently in nineteen eighty-four, and subsequently to this very day, because you've come to see me about Amrit Pal Singh, and just a hue and cry. Uh, making a mountain out of a molehill and people are fleeing isn't that something to worry about but sir uh, coming back to these letters um, a lot of people here I, i spoke to some lawyers and some other people who wanted to go via study route and other channels uh, they say that these letters are also sometimes given to people who are not really persecuted by the state like they don't have any personal conflict with the police or the state uh and yet uh, these letters are given to them would you agree sir there's general terror of the state miss you now here's a gentleman sitting next to you he feels fearful that his house may be raided tonight or the following day and you see what terror the state has committed since 1984 on the sick peoples and there's every reason that they don't feel secure and safe and international law says that you can seek asylum where 
your life is safe and secure so do you also uh, vet these cases when they come to you when people reach out to you for letters do you speak to them personally do you understand what uh, harm or danger their their yes, lives are i in? get reports from my junior jathedars the field jathedars they make the recommendation and then i give them a letter of asylum and uh, do you charge them for these letters sir not necessarily they pay some things when election time is there and they all respect us and they do help us during the elections only are these uh, financial benefits that they give to the party or to you personally not to me personally not to the party direct to the people who put up stages the contractors from where we take help and uh, advertisements to reporters and all that stuff the money goes directly to them right so i uh, was in a border state yesterday a uh, border district yesterday and there i was asking i was inquiring people who have taken these letters and uh, a few of them told me that uh, the money also had to be paid to the district level uh, workers of your party mm-hmm. are you aware that there is a cut Uh, so to say which people in the district are also no, charging i think uh, people take money for these letters it's a genuine demand of the people who are fleeing the country out of terror and it would be unjustified if we took any money from these people who are in danger of losing their lives or their liberty and uh, so uh, one last thing do you think uh, there are cases where people uh, where the police are still harassing people and these are mostly cases from the militancy days um they say that you know they don't have money to even go to the us or to any other country and then seek asylum what are the uh, ways in which uh, have they reached out to you ever uh, for any help sir to uh, seek uh, asylum they reach out for help to me and i can help them as much as i possibly can yeah and sir are these letters still being given to people if they reach out to you say well, today in samratpal case has just happened recently obviously you are a very enlightened journalist then it's very obvious that uh, there's terror amongst the states and they are genuine recipients of such asylum letters right so thank you so much for talking to us